My name is Marco Zambrana, and I just want to take a few moments to share my thoughts with you about our current pandemic and kind of what's inspiring me and how I get through this process. Um, I'm just so blessed to live with my family at the moment. Uh, I came home and uh, get to spend time with my 87 year old grandmother who, although she's older and may not be in good health, it's the fact that right now in this pandemic, she's one of the few people at really at risk of uh, not having great health. And so for me, you know, that gets me down, that concerns me. And so I could let that affect me or I can just enjoy the fact that I get to spend a lot of time with her and be grateful that I get to do so. So although this virus sucks and I can't wait for it to be over, I'm not gonna regret the time that I was stuck in quarantine because I got to bond with my family a whole lot more. So I get to look forward to the hope of life and I hope that you guys can see that as well because it's so easy to get lost in the fear. It's so easy to get overwhelmed by what's depressing or uh, stressful. So my encouragement for you to would be look for the positives, but more importantly, embrace the things that you love and hold on to them dearly, because more importantly, that's gonna get you through. It's gonna be your family, it's gonna be your friends, it's gonna be people you love, because ultimately we're all in this together. And the core thing of getting through this as long as we're all behaving and not going out and being stupid, is that uh, all of this too shall pass. And if you're a creative, this is the best time to be creating because ultimately what will come out of this, what will benefit Hollywood, what will benefit artists around, the writers around, people who don't like writing, people who are more storytellers, you know, whatever. This is a good time to be listening, to be talking, to remember, because this is gonna be something that defines our generation. So with the, that, you know, remember this because it's going to be something that's important. So hope you're having a great day. Be safe, everyone. Um, this is not the time to get depressed. This is the time to be joyful in these moments. Find the joy. Find the hope. Just hold on to that because that's going to get you through. Although COVID was disruptive for pretty much everyone in the world, I think it was the most disruptive for students, honestly, especially at our film school where most people studying there weren't from LA or they're from a different part of California. The blip, as I like to call it now, but it, it didn't feel like a blip at the time. I mean, we all went into lockdown. I mean, no one knew how long this was going to be, what was going to happen with it. it, it was, I mean, it was crazy, right? We all, we all know what that, what that was. For a lot of us, it was our last semester. Uh, so just seeing production after production getting canceled or indefinitely postponed because no one knew like if we'd be able to shoot saying goodbye to people almost every day for two weeks as you know parents were calling our friends home and so everyone was like leaving the state or they were going back home someplace else in california i was just really surreal to say goodbye to so many people i know for me personally it was it was kind of a Everyone else had, you know, families to hunker down with or kind of, kind of like housemates. I wasn't even sure if I'd be able to stay in the country because I hadn't been approved to stay on campus yet. I was still on campus that spring when it all shut down and Biola let me stay there. So I was alone in one of the dorm rooms. I had a whole suite to myself. Biola did make an exception for me that I could remain on campus. I could keep living in the student housing. Um, there was around 200 students that they did approve to stay on campus and they moved us to uh, several apartment homes. Which is a, just a weird experience doing classes online and kind of being by myself, except we had a, a few friends were in my same building. So um, like Rebecca was there and we would kind of watch, you know, kind of go down to the lobby and watch movies from a distance, like, you know, or go, you know, get food and eat across the courtyard. And, you know, it was, you know, it was weird. That really encouraged me a lot of times that at least, you know, I had one good friend and we could, you know, have movie nights or we could catch up. Ironically, we would both had really crazy semesters. And so <laughs> it wasn't until COVID that we both had time to catch up. And so there were some good aspects of it, of like reconnecting with people in different ways um, or finding creative ways to keep in touch with people. But yeah, it was just a very weird time of isolation and displacement and yeah, really appreciating the few people that were still present in our lives. And in some ways, it kind of 
It might have been a good thing for Ruburu because suddenly we didn't have anything else to do. And so I think it helped keep things going on the film or it let us kind of stop and think, oh, okay, now we have some space. Let's, you know, think about Ruburu again. I was starting to work on VFX and really starting to get some of the final pieces together. I'd reached out to Action Studios for a couple last pieces to be worked on. I can't say enough how the film has just changed. Like, I know I say that enough, but it's such an exciting thing to see these, even the small visual effects put in place. Um, the smallest of things, I'm just going to say a few words so you know what I'm referring to. The audience here will just have to wait. Um, <laughs> They'll be like trying to decode these, these coded messages. But uh, Landlord, when he uh, uh, has his scene. Yes. Um, when Elizabeth and Charles have their scene in the um, the apartment. Uh, him him napping. All of those scenes are revolving around that. It just oh, it yeah. makes such an atmospheric difference. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so different. It'll I will say though, world. I will say I hate people's hair. <laughs> I will explain <laughs> later what I mean by that. I, yeah, I can totally see that with like tracking and stuff and rotoing. Oh, p- painstaking by hand roto. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I recorded 15 minutes of that, what that looks like. And so you just see me literally taking a mask going dee 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 dee. Oh my gosh, your poor eyes are probably dead at the end of that day. (laughs) That was a five hour day of working on that shot and that still took me three months to finish. Three months. This is why I don't do that kind of pose. Nor do I. (laughs) I, This is the last time. (laughs) You've got to do what you got to do for film, but like there's a reason why there's a budget for movies and this is definitely one of them. (laughs) feel a little bad about it. I mean, Marco really carried this thing through the rest of post and, you know, did all the sound mixing. So as you can see here, this is the um, final countdown, more or less, of the export for audio. Um, It is going to take approximately uh, not long for us to get that done. Um, It's been about four days now, three days of staying up until 4 or 5 a.m. getting stuff done. And uh, yeah, it's about to pay off, you know. But I, I would get updates like every couple of weeks. Okay, here's here's where we're at. Or in a few months, we'll have this cut. Can you listen to it? And um, yeah, it sort of became a back burner project for me. I mean, honestly, for a little while, just a lot was going on that year. Trying to figure out senior year and am I going to be able to work after this? <laughs> like, it wasn't it wasn't top of priority for for quite a while during that year. It's just a crazy time. I had a really cool glimpse. I was an ambassador with the Producers Guild of America, the PGA, for that year. So I got to sit in on a bunch of COVID meetings as that committee, and they were all figuring out how do we move forward with production during this time? Um, how do we you know, keep filming safely? What are the protocols we can put in place? When do we shut down production? How do we test effectively? Where do we test? Um, how do we do like bubble units and zones? and all those things that you know allowed people to get back to work and so i you know i was in all those meetings over zoom i went back home for the summer got connected to a commercial director a little later in the year while covid was still very present in our lives and most of the world was shut down we ended up doing a a live stream kind of just checking in with everyone and but it was also just really fun to connect with everyone because it was the first time basically since uh, production that we had all been connected through Zoom. Originally, I was only down in Florida for two weeks. And so I'm like, ah, oh, I'll just leave my laptop and stuff at home. I don't need it. Like two oh. weeks. I'll just go on like, I'll just go on vacation for two weeks and then I'll come back and I'll hit the ground running. Yeah, it was a bad idea. Oh. I've been I've been here for like three months now. <laughs> I'm just like, oh. <laughs> but yeah, no, I really don't know. Like I'm still submitting to acting jobs that are out there, but there's not much going. So we'll just see what happens. Um, I need to get back to LA and find a job. So that's another thing. And then you gotta pay rent. I'm still waiting on unemployment. Mm. And it's just like, it's, it's tough. So yeah, I don't know right now. Right now I'm just sort of taking it day by day. Um, I think he was learning a lot and figuring it out and you know, doing a lot with live streams at his job. I, I didn't know really what 
to do on the back end of like the infrastructure for all that. But he, he had this idea to do a live stream about the movie. The original oh, opening God, sequence <laughs> oh. with the score, with the original temp score. I remember when we wanted the fire. <laughs> to understand. Or at least I hope you will. There's nothing I can do. And that's the difference. Dang! Not that we're gonna use that one, Andy, but I thought that was a fun, like, little snippet of just seeing like the director's kind of storyboard to what we actually are using but oh. all right let me join the meeting again hi hello one second andy yeah. sent a new link uh you having some technical difficulties there marco you know give me a moment <laughs> i'm running two computers and all this stuff okay Becca, You're doing great. How are you? I haven't seen you so long. I know. I'm good. Just, you know, living that quarantine life. You graduated, life. right? Yeah. Woo! Oh my god! That's cap and gown are still in the bag I bought them in. <laughs> Your what? My cap and gown are still in the bag I bought them in. <laughs> oh my god. Are you in your dorm still? I am, yeah. They let me stay here because I didn't have anywhere to go for a little yeah. while. But I get to move out uh, late next month, so I'm excited. But how are you doing? What have you been up to lately? You know, <laughs> not much. Um, yeah. No, it's everything's good. Yeah. I like your mask. Yeah, she's cute. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I really like maps. So. <laughs> uh, first, can I send Rebecca and Sarah to breakout rooms so they can see what that looks like? Let's go. All right. So this is where we're going to hold people until we bring you on to the live part of the show. Okay. So I'm going to send you away. And... But it was just great. I mean, we were joking around just like we always did and checking in and making sure everyone was doing okay with all the ups and downs of COVID. But it was honestly like quite a highlight during my time in isolation because this was also at a point in the summer where most of the students on campus had left and uh, there was close to around like 50 people on campus opposed to 200 and Andy was one of the students who had gone back home. So there's like almost no one, like no social interaction in my life. And yeah, it was, it really encouraged me through some of those darker moments in isolation of reconnecting with some really precious film family members. Sound effects on your keyboard and like toilet flushes and like explosions. <laughs> and then when you come in, you're just like boom, 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 boom. Oh my gosh. I use the clapping and the dog barking. Yeah. yeah. And then is it fine if I put reverb on my voice? Voice, voice. I can fake my own reverb. This is good. I'm re I'm ready for this stream. We just need a disco it. ball in your room, bro. I'm mean, up for it. Marco's yeah. losing control. <laughs> you never had control to begin with. <laughs> yeah, you can't control anybody. I'm just gonna show up with like blow up dolls behind me and laser <laughs> like, like a lame shooting in the air, and I'm gonna be like, Marco, there's nothing you can do. <laughs> so I have not slept this week either, so I'm going to be a hot mess on Saturday. Just like on set. <laughs> yeah. Does everyone come on with like big fake mustaches or something? <laughs> what we do? Wear <laughs> I don't even have one of those masks. <gasps> Here, it's, I got you. Have, have, a, have a pile. Oh, sweet. Can, you, can you get it to uh, Florida in two days? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, brief score update for you, Marco and Andy, mostly. Uh, I'm still working on getting, like, contract stuff because that stuff is a pain. Um, I reached out to the different people I know who have released score albums um, because the process for doing that is more complicated than it is for releasing a pop song on DistroKid or whatever. Um, 
So I'm, I'm waiting to hear back from them on what service to try to go with and some of the contracts that are needed. We should fill out the cue sheet. We just won't have a distributor put in basically. Um, so we will end up filling that out, submitting that to ASCAP so that they have it. And then at the point where if it's picked up for distribution or if it's put on whatever platforms, then that's like retroactively filled in. Um, but they do want the info because it's easy to find info for releasing one independently that you're not showing at festivals or for, for, for releasing one that is a standard studio film, but not for this in-between ground of the release mm -hmm. schedule and all that. So if we fully self-distribute ourselves, then we can control when and how that happens. Cool. And do we have, like, I know it's quarantine right now, but do we have any sort of release date or festival date or anything? I was wondering uh, that as well. Thank you. Uh, no, we've been holding off. We were going to submit to festivals this spring and then Plague and finishing the film got delayed. So we're looking yeah. at the fall of things, what's happening. And festival is still, there's so many questions with that later this year. And we don't know what those are going to look like. I think we just wanted to take it as an opportunity to like, share with donors and supporters and the cast and the crew. Hey, we're still around. This is still a thing. You know, the world is upside down, but, you know, let's see what we can do in an hour online on a live stream. And so it sort of became this like behind the scenes recap show of like kind of reminding, I think ourselves and people who were following us what we did and what this was and what it was going to be. And showing like, hey, like we're finishing up the film, like we're gonna do a festival run, like we're still making this possible. And I mean, there was the whole professional side to it and the, the reason why we had to do it. And so, you know, of course we had Marco and Andy and uh, my brother tuned in from Canada and of course we had, you know, Nathan and uh, Sarah. And so it was just kind of cool, like seeing everyone again and kind of connecting despite how weird the circumstances were. So yeah, I'm Andy Brewster. I'm one of the producers and first assistant director of Rubru. And thanks so much for joining us on Facebook and YouTube for this coronavirus edition live behind the scenes look at the making of our film. And three years ago, as many of you know, a small team of mostly freshmen or transfers at Biola University, led by Marco here, writer director, uh, we set out to make an entire feature film. And we had pretty much no idea what we were doing and it was absolutely insane. But we brought on some amazing people to the team and through a lot of hard work, failures and perseverance, we are about to export the entire thing the beginning of next month. So in total it's about 97 minutes, uh, features an entirely original score recorded by a live orchestra, and it took a team of over 150 people, cast, crew, extras, musicians, donors, to make it all less than $15,000, which in terms of film budgets it's pennies, like barely enough to make a strong short film. During that year, I actually met my wife. And even though COVID is remembered as purely this negative thing and, and, and all that, for me, the story of telling this film has been about personal redemption and, and focusing on personal healing and for the characters and, of course, myself. I couldn't say enough about how that year, although many look back on it with not fond memories, it signaled the beginning of the end for that story, but also for me to move on start a new chapter. Yeah, we get to the end of 2020 and the film's in a pretty good place. I mean, it's it's sounding pretty good. You can watch it, it's colored, and we sent it off to a few festivals, which was a, a weird thing to do still that year because most festivals were still completely virtual or had shut down completely or had stopped existing. Festivals, festivals, festivals. There are so many disappointments <laughs> with festivals. Uh, it truly is a mixed bag. It's like applying to a job. It's cover letters saying, hey, please choose me. I'm important. Hey, choose me. My film means something. Hey, choose me. Here's my money. No one was really sure how you engaged with festivals that year. Because the whole value to them, right, is going to watch movies with people together, with live audiences, and to meet filmmakers, and to interact, hopefully with distributors. I mean, that's sort of the... I mean, the, the story we like to tell ourselves as filmmakers is like, we'll send it off to a festival and get distribution and win an award and, and that's how we'll get the film sold. We applied to over 
20, 30 fest top tier festivals that we wanted to get into. And then a couple more that were international and a couple more that were just specifically Christian. And slowly the domino effect started going. First festival, no. Second festival, no. Third festival, no. Fourth festival, sorry, no thank you. And so forth, and so on, and so on. If you're not careful, it's demoralizing. You feel like everything you've poured yourself into, this, this beautiful piece of yourself that you've shaped means nothing to anyone until that one festival. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kat Vasquez, and I'd like to welcome you to the ninth annual International Christian Film and Music Festival official selection. 2020 was a very difficult year for so many of us, and we're praying that 2021 will bring much joy and success. We thank you for choosing ICFF to submit your projects. We're truly grateful, and we appreciate your support throughout the years. In 2020, we had no choice but to have a festival virtually. But this year, we can't wait to see you in person on May 19th through the 22nd in Orlando, Florida. And finally, the last category, we have selected the following feature films. Oligosi, Demon of Fear, Past Shadows, Roe v. Wade, Rubaru, Searching for Faith. Thank you again for your submissions and congrats to all of those who've made it to our official selections list. You will receive an email with your laurel. Please remember that the official nominations will be on Monday, March 15th, 2021 at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I could not believe we were accepted to an internationally recognized festival. Amazing. I remember calling Andy and I said, dude, we're selected. This is crazy. I don't know what this means. I'll, I'll get back to you. But we got into to one in particular, um, ICFF, the International Christian Film and Music Festival, which is the largest Christian film festival in the world held every year in Orlando. And I, I think we weren't even sure about submitting at first because Rubru isn't a Christian film. It, it doesn't fall into that Christian niche that market the same way. I mean, there's not an explicit reference to God. There's not like prayer in it. I mean, I think it has a lot to say about the meaning and value of life and, you know, how not to engage in a relationship. And then they said, stay tuned. And the live stream for nominations was coming. Just being selected was an honor. Just being selected as a film meant all my hard work for so many years was not a total waste. I remember being with my family, my wife to my left, my dad and my mom across from me and my sister there. We were maybe a couple months from before my wife and I would get married and we get this, you know, here's the link. Okay, we're watching, we're watching. Hello, my name is Kat Vasquez and I'd like to welcome you to the ninth annual International Christian Film and Music Festival official nomination. The nominees for Best Supporting Actor in a Feature Film are Matthew Rhodes. Just floored. I was like, if that's it, I'm good. I'm good. Nominees for Best Lead Actor in a Feature Film are Nathan Meese, Ruba Roo. I couldn't believe it. I, I was so ecstatic. Best Original Screenplay nomination. Best Director nomination. I could not believe it. And even just hearing that, that they've been nominated at this International Christian Festival. It was, you know, floored. I honestly was floored. I was like, wow, like our, our little feature like got into something like that we made, like as those really naive kids, this is crazy. And that in itself was really incredible to me. We see they're gonna have a live event in May in 21. And this is, you know, after the vaccine is coming out. So I'm feeling better about engaging with people in person again. So we get that notification and Marco and I are like, we're not doing anything in May, we should go, like, right? <laughs> like if it doesn't get to go anywhere, if all these other festivals are moot, at least we can go, you know, celebrate in person. I didn't have much going on in May, except for my wedding.
I might hate him. Tell me how you feel. It's a it's just a bomb. I'm not looking at it. It's just a bomb of ivory. I'm not looking at it. Oh, there's like a garment back in here. What a beautiful full circle moment to have Andy, Rebecca, there with me at my wedding, but not just there, they stood up with me. Just the fact that this little film was able to bring us people together, united around a common goal, left an indelible impact on my life. Only 19 days after Cassie and I got married, I flew out to Florida. I met up with Andy and began the festival journey. Uh, Matthew actually flew out and joined us too, which was a lot of fun because we hadn't hung out in quite a while with Matthew and we just got to spend a few days with him. So we get to the festival and this was like the first big festival any of us had gone to post the blip. I was really excited to take the opportunity to, you know, practice all the things you're you know, supposed to do at a festival. Like we, we printed cards, right? With the film and the poster on it and on the back it had the screening time and where to watch it. It was a well attended festival. I mean, there were a lot of people there, but we still had to, you know, work the room and get people in the audience to actually see it. I mean, like a lot of other festivals, they have multiple blocks running simultaneously. So you have, some, you have a choice to go see, you know, X, Y, or Z movie. And we wanted people to come see Rubru, obviously. My feet had blisters. This festival was only three days. Our film showed on the third day. Four days, maybe. But I walked that hall. I shook everyone's hands. I passed out cards. Well, we just wanted to bring everyone up to speed a little bit on the festival. So Andy, tell us if you can, where are you and what are you doing? So we are in Orlando, Florida right now, about 20 minutes away from Epcot, which is killing me. Maybe I'll skip the film tomorrow. Just kidding. <laughs> Whatever. But we're here at, with, I don't know, I think there's like 70 some film screening this weekend. There's uh, Kevin Sorbo and a bunch of stars from Christian movies and kind of the, it's kind of like the can of Christian film fest as someone described it to me. So it's been a good time. Yeah. Meeting lots of cool people. And our film screens tomorrow afternoon. And when the screening room came, I, I, I sat with bated breath because Andy and I had made a choice during the middle of the night. I mean, we had both taken several months away from the project. And so we came at it that week with, with fresher eyes again. And I had this nagging thought that, you know, what if we just cut a little bit more? What, how would it change, you know? these sequences if that part just went away. Somehow we, I, uh, <laughs> somehow we cut another seven minutes out of the movie. And I was feeling great, like, yes, I got another seven minutes out of it. It's even shorter. It's a little more sellable now. I think it's a more engaging front half. And then I, I got to send Marco away to actually make all the changes. So I re-exported and delivered on the day before the festival, the final, final, final cut. You never say enough finals. I think if you ever put a final on your name of a, fi of a file type, just be prepared for there would be like seven to 10 to maybe 50 other iterations before it's the final, 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 final. <sighs> Hearing people listen to it, talking to people afterwards, I got my goal. Let it touch one person's heart. And I'll be satisfied. We don't get as many people in as I think we would have hoped. Uh, you know, but that's okay. That happens. You know, every festival, there could always be more. You know, try to be a glass half full type. We went through the red carpet, did press. Matthew Rhodes joined us at the festival. Andy, myself, and my dad. And we just enjoyed the crap out of it. It was so much fun just to mingle with filmmakers, to be back in that world of big dreams and where's the movie going if you were to get distribution. I feel like Marco's getting pretty excited. Like, oh, maybe we have a shot. Like, this, this felt really good. Like, we talked to so many people. Like, in the, you know, this is so much better than so many other films we saw this week. Maybe, maybe there's a shot. Like, yeah, like, we can hope, but 
I, I don't know, I'm naturally a very pessimistic person and I, that's usually a defense mechanism so I don't get hurt. <laughs> And so I was, I was trying to, I think I was putting up walls and thinking, oh, this isn't going to happen. I think I was just trying to prepare myself for, you know, the disappointment of not winning. Category by category goes by. Director and screenplay and best actor and best supporting actor. And it, like one by one, like Ruru doesn't win. And as, as they go through the night, I'm sort of gearing up to figure out, oh, what am I going to say to Marco? Like, he's going to be so discouraged. Like, a uh, person gets up to announce this next award. I didn't even know it was a thing, but I guess they have audience choice for narrative, which in a lot of ways is one of the most important awards at a, at a festival. So what happened was, I am here to do the feature film, the audience choice award. You know, I can feel like this tiny flicker of hope and I try to kill it, I try to squash it, like, nope. Nope, I just need to get ready for the pep talk that needs to happen. So the Audience Choice Award for Feature Film, there's just the name. I was told, Ruba Rube. I don't know how Marco felt, but he just got up like a pro, like he was at the Oscars and went up on that stage. And uh, I'm just sitting there with my mouth open, like, whoa. Okay, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I guess we, we won we the have festival. So many new friends. I met him in the hallway. Not what I was expecting. <laughs> Seriously, thank you so much. Um, so many people to thank. Um, thank you so much for accepting the film. It has uh, been truly an honor. Uh, thank you, ICFF. Thank you, my beautiful wife watching at home. Um, thank you, my cast, my crew, my producer, my supporting actor, my lead actor at home as well. Thank you just so much. It's such a personal story about depression and anxiety. My own personal walk with it led me to write it. And I'm just grateful it was something that touched people's lives. And I'm looking forward to hopefully finding a home with it somewhere and touching more people's lives. And glory to God. Thank you. I had actually like gotten home from a shoot and I was with my friend Laura and we were just like catching up and I get this FaceTime from Andy, which, you know, we don't really do spontaneous FaceTimes and I was like, is everything okay? Like, is this an accident? But I answered it and he was with Marco in Florida and he was like, Rebecca, we just won Best Feature with the Audience Award. <laughs> I was like, what? It was so crazy. I could not believe it. I was like, we won an award? This is amazing. I was like running around the room. I was just, yeah, elated. I couldn't believe it. I was so proud of it. And so glad that, you know, Marco and Andy and, and Matthew, he made it out to the festival. It's so cool that they could be there to accept the award in person. And yeah, really, really amazing moment. And then after we won, um, we got an email from one of the, f I think a, f a couple of distributors just asking about the movie and if we had distribution yet. And suddenly we were sort of living this like Cinderella story that, you know, filmmakers like to dream about all the time. You know, you go to a festival, you win an award and you get distribution right after it. And it was kind of, what happened to us. I mean, we were then talking to two distributors, kind of getting to compare their agreement and, you know, kind of kind of play both sides a little bit. And it was a great place to be um, for the you know, first time filmmaker, having two distributors kind of chase us a little bit. And so we got to examine both, we got to talk to both, and we ended up going with Green Apple. It is crazy. In a lot of ways, like so much has changed since 2018 when we first shot Rubaru. Um, and, you know, even just going back and looking at the BTS or talking with Marco or Andy about it, um, it's really incredible what we managed to do back then because now in you know 2022, working in the film industry on professional shoots um, and seeing how, you know, 
actual shoots around and shoots with budgets. Um, I really think a lot back to those Ruby days of when we really didn't have that much money. We had experience, but very limited film experience and we still made a feature and it's just, yeah, it's really wild when I'm on sets now and I think about how little I knew at the time, DPing this feature. You know, like even the fact that I work with DPs who have never DPed a feature and they're like way more talented than I am, way more experienced than I am. Um, and I think it really is, you know, a testament to when you have a few small dedicated people, you know, you can really do anything, even if it seems impossible. It's been really moving how Marco and Andy and I have kept in touch and stayed friends, you know, even during the periods where, you know, we're all three of us in different states. I'd be in California, Andy would be in North Carolina, and Marco's in Texas, you know, and there, there were periods where Andy and I were both in California, but, you know, just Marco making an active effort to do FaceTimes, or, you know, like, he got Andy and I to film his brother's wedding, or, you know, all of us had a reunion in Austin for Marco's wedding. And it's just, that was honestly a crazy time too, just realizing like, man, we're such close friends because of this little feature that we did together as kids, basically, at a film school. And it's just really incredible to see how that one little film really influenced our lives and our friendships and how we approach filmmaking now. What did I learn making this movie? The best lesson is that you don't make a movie by yourself. You do it with friends. You do it with family. You do it with people that are gonna be there to support you. You bring in the right people. Also you bring in the people that are gonna bring the most heart to it. Because at the end of the day, there's no one there for you besides those that you have come alongside. You're not alone. That applies to filmmaking, that applies to depression, that applies to life. You're not alone. And that's the story of the making of Rubaru. Hope you enjoyed the journey. See you next time.